ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون all praise is due to Allah whom we turn to for help, forgiveness and guidance to the right path. And we seek refuge in Allah from the evils of our souls and we seek refuge in Allah from the evils of our sins. For whomsoever Allah guides, no one can misguide. And whomsoever is misguided, then only Allah, the Almighty alone, can guide him. And I bear witness that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah, the Almighty alone. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his slave and messenger. May the peace and blessings and prayers be upon him until the day of judgment. O you who have believed, fear Allah as you truly should be feared and die only in a state of Islam. My dear brothers and sisters, in last week's khutbah, we spoke to you about Two important blessings which incur loss upon a person if he does not utilize them in that or in a way that is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those two blessings was or were spare time and good health. And we also informed you that we will be shedding light on how a person, how a Muslim, a pious Muslim should be leading his life in accordance to the sayings and actions and affirmations of our dear Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One of you may ask, is this possible? For us to lead a life, a pious life, like our dear Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and like those great companions of his, may Allah be pleased with them all. Is that possible? Or is it out of question? Has this materialistic world got the better of us? and is in control of our lives instead of us being in control of it. Know, my dear brothers and sisters, that the secret to your success and happiness in this life is in upholding, in implementing this beautiful religion of yours. And your downfall and failure and sadness is in keeping away from implementing and upholding this religion. As he the Almighty says in his holy book, فَمَنِ اتَّبَعَ هُدَاي فَلَا يَضِلُّ وَلَا يَشْقَى He who follows my guidance he will never be misguided, go astray, and he will not suffer, he will not grieve, he will not be miserable in this life and the next. فَمَنْ تَبِعَهُ دَاي فَلَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ He who follows my guidance, no fear will overcome them nor will they find grief or nor will sadness overcome them in this world and in the next. That's on condition that you follow Allah's guidance, that you implement and uphold His guidance, His religion, what has come in the Qur'an and in the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That is your key to success. 
in this world and in the next. Man amila salihan min dhakarin aw untha wa huwa mu'minun fala nuhyiyannahu hayatan tayyiba. Whoever does good, righteousness, whether male or female, and he is a believer, we will surely give him a pleasurable life. That's a guarantee from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he will give you a pleasurable, happy, successful life on condition that you do righteousness, that which is pleasing to him with a correct and sound belief. And look at what is contrary to that, what is opposite to that. وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِ فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكَ وَنَحْشُرُهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَعْمَ وَالْعِيَاذُ بِاللَّهِ And he who keeps away from my remembrance, what happens? He will have a life of miserableness, a miserable life. Subhanallah. And on the day of judgment, what happens to him? Allah resurrects him, وَالْعِيَادُ billah blind. Because he turned a blind eye to Allah's laws and obligations and rules. Did not implement his religion. For Allah makes him blind and resurrects him blind on the day of judgment. But a lot of our Muslim brothers and sisters are living a miserable life. Life of depression, anxiety, sorrow, sadness, and what have you. Why? Because they're not upholding. They're not implementing Allah's religion. They're not holding on to what? Is their success what their success lies in? Subhanallah. And there's a beautiful principle which our pious predecessors used to advise each other on. Aslih ma baynaka wa bayna Allah, yuslihu Allah umurak. Yuslihu Allah ma baynaka wa bayna an nas. يَتَوَلَّ اللَّهُ أَمْرَكَ Fix that which is between you and Allah. Allah will take care of your affairs. He will fix that which is between you and the people. He will look after you. He will preserve you. اِحْفَظِ اللَّهَ يَحْفَظُكَ Prophet Sallallahu said to Ibn Abbas, Be mindful, be watchful of Allah. Safeguard his rights. Implement what is owing to him, what is pleasing to him. Allah will preserve you, will protect you. That's the simple solution, my dear brothers and sisters. A lot of our brothers and sisters today has a medicine bag. Each and every one of us probably has, has a medicine bag to cure our physical ailments and our non-physical ail ailments. Do we have a spiritual bag to cure our physical bodies and our soul? This physical bag is more important than your medicine bag. And it's available to everyone at no cost. It carries with it or in it the Quran, dhikr, dua, the prayer. This is where your real cure is in, my dear brothers and sisters. And these things, yes, they do cure the physical body. And they cure... The body which we do not see and needs to be fed. And that is the soul. Which cannot be fed or cured through anything else. Other than the spiritual bag.
So, a person who is deprived is one who knows that there are five to six hours for the duha prayer, yet does not commit to five minutes. It only takes you five minutes to pray this duha prayer, which suffices you from giving 360 charities in the day. This is obligatory on you every day to give 360 charities. This duha prayer suffices for the 360 charities due to you having 360 joints in your body. It's a show of gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for your health and for these joints. Yet we do not have the time to pray these two units of prayer which will only take you, take you less than five minutes to pray. And you have five to six hours sometimes to pray them, you don't have time for it. This is a person who is deprived of all goodness. And another person who is deprived of all goodness is one who knows that there are approximately 10 to 11 hours in the night yet cannot commit to doing the witr prayer, one ruka, which will take you a minute or two. And which the Prophet ﷺ never used to leave, whether residing or traveling. And which Allah, or whom Allah loves. Allah loves this prayer because He is one. He is singular. He is an odd number. The Almighty. Another person deprived of all goodness is one who has 24 hours in the day and night, yet cannot commit to read a chapter of the Quran or to read his part of the Quran on a daily basis. It's 24 hours in the day and night, yet cannot find time for the Quran. And one who is truly deprived of all goodness is one who has a tongue which never tires from speaking, yet cannot find time during his day and night to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala once. This is the one who is truly deprived of all goodness. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم من كل ذنب فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله in the name of Allah and all praises due to Allah, may the peace and blessings and prayers be upon his Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My dear brothers and sisters, we are going to shed light on how a pious Muslim should lead his life in the night and in the day in accordance with the sunnah of our dear Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in accordance with his sayings and actions and affirmations. And we'll be summarizing these obligations and or highly recommended deeds and actions, all voluntary actions, and they are many. There are many obligations and recommended voluntary actions that you should be doing in accordance with the sunnah of your dear Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We're going to start off with the night. Because Islamic day starts off in the night. So we're going to start off on how to go to bed and then how to wake up, what to say, etc, etc. We'll be carrying on uh, with each point at a time and shedding light on these issues one at a time. First and foremost, my dear brothers and sisters, it's advisable 
that you go to sleep early. After Isha. Unless you have a reason not to do so. A beneficial reason not to do so. That is the sunnah of your Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It has authentically been narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam كَانَ يَنْهَا عَنِ النَّوْمِ قَبْلَهَا أي قَبْلَ الْعِشَاء قَبْلَ صلاة الْعِشَاء وَعَنِ الْحَدِيثِ بَعْدَهَا Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to prohibit forbid sleeping before the Isha prayer and talking, staying up for idle talk, nonsense talk after it. There are other narrations wherein the Prophet Sallallahu at times used to discuss the affairs of the Muslims with Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu an. And that's a beneficial reason. At times he used to worship. That's a beneficial reason. At times he used to spend time with his wife. And that's a beneficial reason. So if there are uh, 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 يعني, beneficial reasons for you to stay up after Isha, then do so and then immediately go to sleep. If there is no reason for you to stay up, you should go to sleep immediately after Isha. After the Isha pray. Due to this hadith of the Prophet وسلم, that used to prevent or prohibit us from staying up talking, nonsense talk, non beneficial talk after Isha. So that's one of the first sunnahs that we should be trying to implement. The second sunnah is that once you want to sleep, you should do wudu. You should do wudu as you do your wudu for the prayer. إِذَا أَرَادَ أَحَدُكُمْ أَنْ يَطَّجِعْ فَلْيَتَوَضَّأْ وُضُوءَهُ لِلصَّلَاةِ Prophet Sallallahu says, If one of you wants to go to sleep, then he should uh, do his ablution like he does it for the prayer. That's another very important Sunnah that a pious believer should implement to go to bed when he is in a state of purification, state of purification. When he approaches the bed, there's another very important sunnah, and that is that he should take his lower garment or part of his garment and uh, wipe the bed with it. And what? Brush the bed or wipe it with it. Why is that? The Prophet ﷺ says, you do not know who took your place once you left it. And when you got out of your bed, huh, you don't know who came in your bed, who came into your bed. Could be the shaitan, could be a jinn, could be huh, some harmful cr a crawling insect. Or what have you. So you wipe the bed. You brush the bed with your. Uh, the end of your. Thobe. Clothes. Or a towel. Or even the blanket. Of the bed. And whilst you are doing that. Or before you do that. There's another very important sunnah. And that is to say. Bismillah. Falyusammillah. As has come. In the authentic hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So you say Bismillah and then you start wiping huh, the bed before you get into it. Once you get into the bed, the sunnah is to thumma attaj' ala shaqqiq al ayman. The sunnah is to put your hand under your face. And on your right side. You sleep on your right side. That's the proper way of implementing the sunnah when entering the bed. 
And then you start with your athqar, and they are Allah. We'll be shedding light on those athqars, inshallah, in our next khutbah. But these are the very important sunans that we should be implementing before uh, entering the bed. After Isha, don't stay up late. If there's no reason for you to stay up, there's no beneficial reason. Do your wudu. Brush your, 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 uh, your bed by saying Bismillah first and then blowing or brushing uh, the place of where you sleep on your bed. What is also advisable, because we have this modern technology today, is to put your alarm on early. Of course, preferably before Fajr. So that you can get up for the tahajjud prayer. We'll be shedding light on that, inshallah, probably the next khutbah. If not, then at least for the fajr prayer. Do not let the fajr prayer go by. And that's a great blessing that we have these alarms to wake us up, especially if you're a deep sleeper. But if you naturally wake up, then alhamdulillah, thank Allah for that great blessing. That is what is advisable when you hit the bed. Allahumma a'inna ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik. Allahumma a'izza al-islam wa al-muslimin wa adhilla al-shirka wa al-mushrikin wa akbit a'da al-deen. Allahumma ansur man nasara hadha al-deen wa akhdhul man khadhala hadha al-deen. Allahumma ansur man nasara hadha al-deen wa akhdhul man khadhala hadha al-deen. Allahumma ansur deenaka wa kitabaka wa sunnat nabiyika Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ibadaka al-salihin fi kulli makanin ya qawiyu ya azizu ya mateen Allahumma Allahumma ati nufusana taqwaha wa zakkiha anta khayru man zakkaha anta waliyuha wa maulaha Allahumma habib ilayna al-iman wa zayinhu fi kulubina wa karzih ilayna al-kufra wa al-fusuka wa al-usiyan wa jalna min al-rashidin wa jalna min al-rashidin bi rahmatika ya arham al-rahimin اللهم اغفر لجميع المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات اللهم فرج هم المهمومين من المسلمين ونفس كرب المقربين من المسلمين وقد الدين عن المدينين من المسلمين واشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين واشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم إن نعوذ بك من الجنون والجذام والبرص وسيء الأسقام اللهم إن نعوذ بك من الجذ من الجذام والبرص والجنون وسيء الأسقام يا قوي يا عزيز يا متين يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم أصلح لنا ديننا الذي هو عصمة أمرنا وأصلح لنا دنيانا التي فيها معاشنا وأصلح لنا آخرتنا التي إليها معادنا ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتبع لنا مولانا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وأخذ دوانا الحمد لله رب العالمين وأقم الصلاة